Hello, and welcome to VO's Journey. My name is Anthony Pika. This show is all about helping the new and upcoming voiceover artists grow their business and sidestep all the crazy things that I seem to step on. It is Monday, December 14th. We are, what, 16, uh, 17 days from the end of this month until we hit 2021. Looking forward to it. And speaking of the new year, I want to talk to you today about where can you get more voiceover work. All right, you're like, hey, where can I get more voiceover work? Well, we're going to talk about it today. I got actually 10 different things or 10 different ways that you can get uh, voiceover work, okay? And um, just as a quick note, it's easy for me to say these, but of course, each one of them comes with a slew of work to get up and running on them, to get business. But these are, to me, the ways right now to get voiceover work. Okay. All right. And by the way, if you are just stopping by or you've been here and you haven't had a chance, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button and that hit that uh, bell notification. So when I do post a video or go live, you will know about it. All right. Let's dive into it. The first one on our top 10 list here is freelance websites. These are sites like Fiverr, like um, ACX, like Upwork, like um, uh, people per hour, any of these websites that you know promote these freelance, it's free for you to join. They probably take a little um, cut from when you uh, sell a product, but it's a great place to grab work, especially when you're just starting out. All right, the next on uh, number two is going to be pay to play sites. These are sites where you pay a fee up front for the year, and then they send you auditions, right, from people who are looking to uh, to, to get work, right, to, to, to they're looking to get a voiceover. So these are sites like Voices.com, these are sites like uh, The Voice Realm, Voice123, okay, and uh, many other sites that you could do that on, Guru, many of these sites you can pay and you need to pay to get advanced services. Some of them double as freelance sites, meaning you can join them for free, but you're not really going to get the bulk of what they can offer unless you pay. And they're aptly called pay to play. Okay, great. So that's number two. Number three, intermediary websites. Now this is a a term or basically I got from uh, Miles Shacoin, who is the uh, uh, the the owner over at uh, Voquint.com. And you know, the intermediary sites are basically websites that um, act as a go between you and the client. So, you know, it might be free to join them, but they basically work with the client and then work with you and every single one they manage, like every single voiceover. Whereas a site like Fiverr or Upwork, you know, the 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 people on those sites that work there, they don't manage those. They let the algorithm take care of it, and it's your job to work with the client through the website. Whereas an intermediary, this is a people who work in between, right? All right, they're they're actually you know helping the client with everything, and then relaying the message to you, helping you, giving it back to the client, et cetera, et cetera. So because of that. All right, they take probably a little bigger chunk of the money. However, you know, you don't have to deal with all the stuff that comes with a cranky client or something like that. So those are interme- intermediary sites. Those are things like Voquint, like Voice Jungle, okay? These websites are sites where they have someone who handles every single job for you, okay? And you your job is just to do the voiceover, okay? Uh, again, typically they they, they uh, take more of the chunk of change, but again, they're like someone who's assisting you in it, okay? So that's the third way, intermediary websites. All right, next, number four, emailing. Oh, emailing. So we all know about emailing or email marketing if you do. Basically, on this one, your job is to find companies that need voiceovers or production companies, audio, video, that sort of thing, and actually look them up through Google or you know any other search uh, search engine. And once you find them, you send them an email with your demo, just saying, "Hey, I found you on Google, and uh, I was wondering if you were accepting demos. I've attached my stuff, I, you know, and I'd, I'd love to work with you if you ever if you ever need a voiceover artist, something like that." Right. So emailing is probably one of the oldest forms of online marketing, period. 
right? Just because you know you find contact information and you email. There's a million different ways to do that. There's there's sites like Mailshake who do it who can make it automatic for you. There's companies out there who will do it for you. You can purchase email lists, although I don't really recommend purchasing them. But you know the the idea here is that you're emailing, you're cold emailing, getting them out to people, and this is a long term thing doesn't happen overnight. It takes a long time. Most people you'll hear will say, hey, I started emailing. I got, I just got a job from someone I emailed last year, right? Because they're like, oh, something came up, right? But the key to that whole thing is, is to just, you need a lot. You need to do a lot of emails, okay? Because you're just sending cold emails out. All right. So that was number four. Number five, all right, is actually finding contacts through social media. I always... I think of social media in many different ways. One of the ways you can think about social media is like an epic phone book, right? Because, you know, if you're a business, most every business is on social media, right? I mean, pretty much every business is. And one thing that businesses do is they want you to find them. They want you to find their contact information so you can get a hold of them, okay? So it's a great way to find contact information, whether it's an email address, whether it's a phone number, whether it's a physical address, okay, their website, it's a great place to find the people you're actually looking for. Not only can you use that to find emails, but more importantly, you can use that to start messaging, you know, starting a conversation. Now, just so you know, what we don't ever want to do is send out something like, hey, buy from me. We don't want to. We don't want to just do that. We want to build a relationship, like getting getting to know what they're doing and their products and their brand, and becoming a part of the conversation of what they're trying to do. And then, as time goes on and you nurture that relationship, then you bring up that you can that you do voiceover work and you love to help them, right? But it takes time. You build a relationship, but it's a great way to find any business out there all over the world through social media. Okay, so that's number five. Number six, cold calling. So here's another way that you can get business. And I actually really do like cold calling, again, for vetting your email address. Now, some people will say, oh, cold calling, don't do that. It's 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 uh, obtrusive. You know, you're going to bother, bother people. Remember, cold calling a business is different than cold calling someone at home, right? Like, you know, we don't like getting sales calls at our house, but at biz- at work, at a business, we expect it. You know what I mean? Like it's a different scenario. You know, as a business, I don't know what's out there unless someone gets a hold of me or I take forever to search and find it, right? But at home, I just kind of want to be left alone. Do you see what I mean? So there's a difference there when you're doing cold calling to businesses. And it's a great way to get people like the right person's email address to send their demo to if they're accepting people on their roster, right? It's the right way to vet an email address to make sure it's not going to be kicked back from you, all right? So it's a great way. Cold calling actually is wonderful. Uh, um, A lot of people are nervous to do it, and I understand. But cold calling is a great way to, to, to do it. So that's number six. Number seven, I would be remiss if I didn't mention agents or agencies, okay? Uh, A good portion of the voiceover business uses agents, and they use agencies to help them find business, okay? Um, I I always call freelance websites like Fiverr and Upwork, uh, People Per Hour, as online agents, right? Because their, their job is to find business and bring it to you. But an agent is going to be a lot more depending on what agent you get or you know agency you work for, they're going to be more of uh, exclusive, all right? A lot of times they might ask you to sign some exclusivity contract, something where it says, hey, you only work with me in this region or you only do X, Y, Z, you know what I mean? And then they bring you auditions and you audition. It's the same, I mean, it's the same thing as paying a website. The difference is, is you're gonna get more of a personal touch and you know, you, you know, the, the, the hopefully they the agency themselves can get better paying work, et cetera, et cetera. The challenge I find with agents and agencies, though, just like anything else, is that, you know, it's becomes uh, a little too controlling for me. But it's not uh, th- this this um, video today is more just about options that you have for getting work. So that's number seven, agents and agencies. Finding them, literally go on Google and start typing them in. Go to city to city, you know, start with your city that you live in, but go around and, you know, and see who's in your agent, talent agencies, right? You'll start getting uh, information, voiceover agents. All you got to do is type in and start looking, 
Okay, and again, you go by city by city, you'll find all kinds. All right, so let's dive into number eight, audio production studios. So this is kind of on the fence of agencies, but a lot of times you'll have audio production studios that uh, do a variety of audio work, whether it's music, uh, whether it's commercials, you know, whether it's voiceover, uh, whether it's instrumental stuff. But basically they have and they have a roster of people they work with in case someone needs a voiceover. All right. So basically you reach out to these people and they have you fill out, you know, a little form online and you submit your demo. And if they accept you, do you know what I mean? You go on to their roster and you can find these by literally doing what I said about the agents and, and stuff is, you know, look for audio production companies, type in a city, type in every city in the United States, just start typing them and you'll find them. And what will happen is as you find these, sometimes they'll just pop up and you're like, oh, look at that. You know, like somebody will message you for that very reason. But in this particular case, actually put a search audio production studios and you'll find those. You can also find them on social media because they're on social media. All right. Your job is to get a hold of them and figure out how you can get on their roster. A lot of times they're not um, they're not agencies, so they're not looking for some exclusivity uh, agreement from you. Okay. They're just looking to put you on their roster. And a lot of times you'll find them, you know, close to you and they're in major cities or whatever. So just do a search online for that. All right. Number nine, running ads on Facebook, on Google, on YouTube, on Twitter, on LinkedIn, on Instagram, paying for advertisements where you come on and either it's a a, a, a photo of you, you know, a, or a picture that you've created, you know, hey, you know, uh, check out my voiceover services, you need a voiceover, you know, or you need some, you need an intro to your podcast, or you're looking to get a narrator for your audio book, you know, fast and easy uh, to work with me, you know, what 10% off, you know what I mean, like an ad. So that's a way now you got to pay for it. And again, you know, you're going to be competing against other people, but Ads are one of the most powerful ways to get in front of who you are looking for. Just make sure that before you do an ad, you do some research on how to actually do them correctly so that you – because you can spend – Lord knows I've spent a lot of money trying to figure it out, you know what I mean, before it took time to actually dive in and learn. You can waste a lot of money. But ads are some – I had some – I saw an ad um, uh, for another voice actor who is selling their services before one of my voice <laughs> over one of my videos on our channel. So, I mean, people are putting out ads. I right? pre-roll YouTube. And you can also with Google, you can actually put it – you can you can target where to put it in front of, right? So, like if someone's looking for voiceover, you can target that, which is very powerful. But again, it costs extra money. So depending on your budget, that's up to you. But – Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, they all have ad services, right? I mean, you know, Facebook. So it's a, it's, it is another way for you to market and advertise your voiceover services. Okay. Uh, now we're on to number 10, the last one. This is the one that I love the most, but it takes probably the most work. And that is building a community, all right, of, you know, business owners or people who are interested in, and, you know, learning more about being better at what they're doing. And they start to look at you as a, um, you know, maybe a thought leader in the field that you're trying to be in. Or let's so let's say that you want to do real estate video voiceovers. OK, so, you know, starting a community for realtors uh, real estate companies where you are assisting, like you're just putting out educational information about real estate and about getting licensed and about, you know, how to, uh, how to price a property and about, you know, how to, how to, you know, close a deal with a client, how to find more client, you know, like all these things that you can help real estate people with. And then, right, you have a place where they can get voiceovers from you. All right. As a part of your way to help them all right, get more business. Do you see what I mean? So you create a community by giving and giving and then, you know, you offer your services and if they need it, they'll work with you. OK, but it takes time. All right. But it is one of the, the, the ways to really close the deal. Uh, I mean, with with being long term. 
you know what I mean? So that is one way. And you do that through communities, through your, your website, through Facebook, um, and you use, you know, you use social media, you can use ads, you can uh, use cold calling, all kinds of things. You can do that, send out newsletters, all these things work with your community. All right. And by the way, you can offer audio books, you know, audio, um, audio narration for audiobook services. You can offer commercials, you know, for real estate. I mean, like you can do a lot and that's just one field. You know, you can set up a variety of these different communities, but it takes time. Okay. So anyways, these are the top 10 that we come up with freelance websites, pay to play websites, intermediary websites, emailing, finding contacts through social media and reaching out to them, cold calling agents and agencies, audio production studios, running ads on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, Google, and building a community of business owners by supplying them advice and information. Okay, I hope these helped you. Again, please take a moment to like and subscribe below. Thank you as always, and I will see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.